I'm very interested in this one. This one's titled, Whose Girlfriend is the Most Attractive? And I just had some thoughts about this, just a lot of thoughts, mainly to do with, I tweeted about it actually, because <laughs> there was one thing that was just so relatable to me. These are our, our ladies, okay. Now, the thing with Jubilee, I find Jubilee fascinating, just because I think, firstly, it brings out the worst in human beings, and it brings out the the most lazy form of trying to understand human beings possible, which is looks and appearances, and everything ultimately being reduced to sex. And I think it is like a dating app, but as a YouTube channel. And I think that this is one of the very unfortunate things about us now, is that we're sort of taking all of this, all of this that we find on dating apps, that we find on Jubilee, and then we project it into the world. <laughs> and I don't think that that is serving us in any meaningful way. So yes. There's based on a specific trait, what would it say about how you see them and how they see you? We brought together five couples and had the girlfriends rank themselves based on how attractive they think they are. Hi, my name is Ajane. I'm 23 and I'm a mindset coach from Sacramento. Hi guys, I'm Vera. Okay, firstly, how are you 23 years old and you're a mindset coach? I feel that like sort of being a mindset coach or being somebody who has anything to do with sort of um, teaching people things that pertain to experience in life necessitates having experience in life. It's sort of like when I get a therapist or when I see therapists who are incredibly young and they like look like the world has not like in any way like beaten them down or affected them. <laughs> okay. I get the same kind of vibes. I guess that's why it sells because you know, she looks great and she's like a mindset coach. So customers are going to be like, oh my gosh, yes. Wow. Imagine if I could embody everything that she has, then my life would be great. You know, if only there was an Alexa of life, you know, and then you could just turn back the years, do a bit of Benjamin buttoning, you know. <laughs> but... yeah. I'm Jennifer, I'm 26. I'm a property manager and also up and coming real estate agent as well. But... Okay, Jennifer's lived. I'm convinced. If she said that she was a mindset coach, I'd be like, okay. You've seen, you've seen like the, the housing market. <laughs> you've seen the crash, okay? You get it, I get you. I'm Sky. I'm 21, I'm a full-time student and I'm also getting my Pilates certification. <laughs> I'm sorry. They clap and click at the Pilates certification. I mean, Pilates, I'm sure it's hard. I did one Pilates class once just in order to impress a gym teacher who I had the hots for. I thought she was absolutely beautiful. So I went to her Pilates class um, and I never went back again because Pilates just was not, <laughs> it just wasn't worth it. It was too much. How they carry themselves, self-care, hygiene, how they smell. <laughs> yeah, I just have that's the, that's the sad thing, I think. I think because with dating apps and with shows like this, you can't tell all those things, all those really significant things, especially when for the majority of people, who are not in hookup culture and in the hookup culture thing in life. You're looking for things that really, the physical, uh, as in how somebody looks, just, you know, the mind's eye, is not as important. It's important, but it's not as important as these other things. And you can't tell any of these other things through something like this, through a medium like this. So inevitably, I think all of these girls are going to just look so shallow because they're going to base everything on looks, even though, those are not the criteria and not the things that they would actually probably look for in like a long-term partner. Either most of them say that they're just shallow and horrible people, which I don't think is actually the case. I think it is just the nature of the show, just like it's the nature of dating apps. They make people horrible um, and ruthless. It is what it is. If we went out into the real world, it wouldn't be that case, I would argue. That's why we, we, we should, uh, I think we should get off the dating apps, I really do. I think we are sabotaging our own abilities to find people that we could actually find ourselves compatible with uh, or could develop compatibility with um, over time. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think everyone here is like definitely like really attractive. Yeah. I'm just gonna say it out there. There's only one person there who I actually think is genuinely confident. Um, and it's the one person that I'm attracted to purely for this reason. 
that she is confident. The other four, not at all confident. I say it's an act of confidence because I wouldn't say that I am them, but I have no confidence. And I can, I can just recognize the signs of like that no confidence. It's just, it's interesting to see. Okay. <laughs> Okay, first off, no one's a five here. I think we're all attractive women here. Should we start with outfits? Yes. I like her outfit. Oh, oh, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> and your hair is yeah, gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. Your makeup's well, on I point. Like... You need to come with me, though. Okay, no, for sure. Because yeah. it's gonna be like Olivia Rodrigo. Oh, oh very true. Very, very true. much so. The attention to detail, yes. like the beads, the Ooh. necklace, the okay. rings. Maybe tattoos, because I've been seeing your guys' tattoos. <laughs> Oh, I don't have a tattoo. So. <laughs> Which is the one thing that like, our okay. tattoos are? Are they attractive? Girls. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I think, that's that's like, I think they're attractive. I think right. I have some like a lot of stupid tattoos. Like I have a math integral on my back. Yeah. It's like really nerdy. I think you should be yeah. a tattoo. No. I feel like you're Miss Stallion. Like, yeah! <laughs> my uh -huh. hair, everything. The bill. Yeah. Me, everything. Awesome. Like you played soccer growing <laughs> up or something. Oh my gosh, okay. I've forgotten about this part. <laughs> You know this, you know this. This this dynamic, you know this dynamic so well. You've either seen it, or I think in the majority of cases, we aspire to be a part of it. Because the thing that like girls, especially in school and like in life, what we look for in all situations is affirmation and security. And if that means ignoring somebody else and not affirming them, because the group is getting affirmation from doing that and you've been accepted into the group either um, consciously or subconsciously, you, you will do that. Uh, this is, whew, this is rough to see, but this is, this I see everywhere. <laughs> they have not even looked at Jennifer. They haven't even like, it's like she's absolutely and in entirely invisible to them. They're not even featuring her in the conversation. I loved how they were saying at the beginning that I think two of them moved down because they had tattoos. And then at that point, Jennifer said, oh, I don't have tattoos. They didn't even listen to her. And so then those two others got to stay sort of in their place. I don't want to say it's mean girl because I don't feel that it's mean girl. I feel that this is just regrettably the nature of a lot of social interactions which ha which happen i feel that a lot of people when you get into a situation with strangers it's like the first day of school when you're at a new school you don't know anybody and you're trying to find your people and it's all about you not being the one who stands out and not being the one who's left out and i don't think i don't think this is just high school this happens in life everywhere. Uh, that's why people go to clubs and packs and you don't go alone um, because it's you just want to be accepted. And I think what I said just now about confidence. These four, I recognize them. I recognize these four so much. They have confidence, but it's very superficial, very surface level confidence. Uh, it's the kind of confidence that you see all over social media at the moment. It's based purely on being a young, attractive person. It's based on your brand. It's not the kind of confidence that comes with, I feel, maturity, with experience, finding and cultivating other things in your life. Jennifer's okay with it. She's accepted that she's not as conventionally attractive as all of them, as all, all of them are. And she's okay with that. And she takes this so well. Like she is not like, you know, she's not like sulking about it. She's not crying about it. I think that's true confidence. Like that's genuine, like a genuine kind of confidence um, that is actually commendable because I am, I am like them insofar as having no confidence. And that shows, like it shows so much. People aren't attracted to people who aren't confident. I almost went to the Olympics for both ice skating and skiing. Oh. I, I go to the gym for mental clarity and just yeah. to get my physical I, appearance up there, you know? I salute you to that. Right. that was, that's actually really gym scared me. Oh my God, they just <laughs> The men. The men. <laughs> they just ignored her. She's like, I go to the gym. I do this at the gym. I do like this kind of, you know, I do for mental clarity and everything. And it's like, <laughs> wow, this gives me flashbacks. This is, 
Wow. Okay. okay. Personality. Yeah. Those yeah. personality. Girl, you had me up. Yeah. Like, yeah. You are. You're just, she's a character in a good way. You two definitely go yeah. up. I'm definitely more yeah. quiet. You Shut up. Yeah. 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 I just talk a lot. <laughs> Don't get it. It's good enough. Oh, you have such a pretty smile. Yeah. 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 Yours is pretty sad. So white. And so is yours. And you have a mole right here, which is kind of cute. <laughs> you know, it's like hidden accents. You scared me. Because you're so pretty. I know. I'm like sunburn turning red. <laughs> oh my god. It's just so obvious now. <laughs> they don't even pay her like a single compliment. Like not one compliment. Oh my gosh. I wouldn't say that it's like fake exactly per se. But I think it's got more to do with trying to build up their sense of being a group and a clique than it has to do with them actually thinking those things. I think it's more to do with reinforcing and validating themselves in order to keep their energy, keep, keep their momentum up. They're feeding off the fact that they aren't Jennifer because they perceive Jennifer as being the outsider and they don't want to be a part of Jennifer. And I freaking love your body so. Yeah. Um, I wish I had your legs. Are you kidding yeah. me? I'm literally yeah. built like a corgi. <laughs> <laughs> Get up there. Yeah. I'll switch with you. Yeah. 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 If you're built like a corgi, then then what is that you saying about Jennifer? Considering that you put yourself before her. Wow. Okay. Okay. Me too. <laughs> no, 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 no. Girl, you up there. <laughs> All right, now, why don't you guys now take an average kind of mix personality overall and say that would be your final ranking? Okay. Mm. I think you're definitely number yeah. one for me. Yeah. Love you guys. No question in that. <laughs> I was expecting myself to be number five. Not because I don't think highly of myself, but just because I was on a, I don't know, like on set with all these beautiful women and they all have something going on in their lives too. I just feel like I'm, I'm okay with what they set me at. <laughs> okay, I think this was the thing that really interested me in this video when she said those things. Because I compared her to a tweet that I saw the other day. Well, actually tweets that I see a lot because I follow a lot of incel accounts, uh, fascinating people. It's interesting to see how she approaches being conventionally unattractive or not as attractive as the other girls and how she speaks about them and speaks about her situation relative to how online a lot of incel men talk about other people who seemingly get girls um, and they don't and the kind of resentment at that and the resentment at other men um, and I would say particularly more so other men than even the girls and a lot of their sort of animosity and rage about it and I think it's really very interesting. I think this is something that a lot of them could actually learn from insofar as like seeing how that kind of bitterness doesn't get you anywhere. Because imagine if Jennifer had exhibited the same kind of traits as um, your stereotypical insult online, saying that this is unfair, that I'm actually a nice guy and these people can't see it, that this is all about the superficiality of how they look, that uh, because I don't look as conventionally attractive as them, um, I'm not gonna get laid and that nobody's gonna even give me a second look and everything is just a conspiracy against me and against um, my prospects of getting a partner or a girl. Um, and that it's all their fault and nothing is on me at all. It's all their issue and their fault because, you know, they're bitches. And, you know, I think like, like with like a lot of the things that incels say about the superficiality of modern dating and people not caring about them and not giving a hoot about them. Yeah, that's right. Uh, like we can see with Jennifer, they honestly have not even given her like a second thought. She's, why is she even there? They're completely ignoring her, obliterating her with their lack of any kind of humanization of her. I do agree, Yasmin, she was a little heartbroken. I would say her heartbreak comes more so from the fact that she's been really nice to them and they're not even giving her the time of day. I think the difference with insults is that they're purposely not nice uh, and people don't give them the time of day. 
You know what? I have an idea. We can hold hands and then we're all number one. <laughs> we're, we're connected. Go. We're connected. <laughs> Send a message. Yeah. <laughs> Least to most. Least to most. I would say least. Or do it at the end, the turtleneck, just because it's my, my style. Two, uh, her, because I don't like tall girls. That's my life. <laughs> <laughs> you see, it works both way, gentlemen. Guys don't like tall girls and, uh, you know, girls don't like short guys. Me, for one, I like me some short guys, okay? I like my Stanley Tucci's, uh, I like my Danny DeVito's, uh, <laughs> so... Three, four, and then five. Uh, I think I'd go five with the blue socks, just because she is tall, and I'm like five seven. Oh yeah, I like my Kevin Hart's as well. Uh, yeah, nothing like a funny short guy. I'll go four, three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start from one. I'm gonna say one. Um, yeah, four. I think she's super sweet, and then. Five, nothing against, just um, not my type. She's still really cool though, has a great building personality. Um, I'll start from five. I think she's great, um, she has a great personality. It's just not something that I think I find as attractive in particular. Four. Oh. Yeah, that was interesting. You can see like the way that she's trying to pretend that she doesn't care. You can see how she's trying to like play it off like it doesn't bother her, but it bothers her. You can tell, you can tell. It's bothering the mindset coach. I can tell. I can tell that it's bothering her. I feel you, girl. Four. She has like, yeah, like a really cute turtleneck. She's very sweet. Three. And then two. She has some sort of Kardashian vibe going on. That's what I said. It's like. That's what I said. And then one. Like, obviously my girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I would say number five would be her. Not my type. Love the hair though. Number four, I would say it would be her. She's a little bit on the quiet side. Uh, as number three, I would say her. Because she's a little too tall for me, I would say. Love the long jacket. And of course, number, uh, number um, what was I? It's like five. Like, number okay, five, so there you go. Number five, yeah, I would yeah. say it would be you. Not only because she's my girlfriend, but because I just love simple. Yeah. And that's what made me. Oh. I love simple. What? Oh. Men, please take notes, okay? Don't say that. Don't, don't, don't say that about your partner. Don't, don't say like, I like simple, just so that you look cool with your guys, you know, because I mean, it's just, ah, oh, no. This is just like, a, this is a typical group dynamic thing, I feel. This is the problem that I have with things like this, because this is a typical group dynamic thing. Um, I think there's nothing wrong with him saying that she's simple. I think it's the way that he said it. I feel that it wasn't him complimenting her in as much as it was him trying to justify why he ranked his girlfriend number one to the guys who've all ranked her as four or five. Uh, I think probably if they were in private or if it wasn't sort of like a public deal and spectacle. He may have uh, nicer things to say about her uh, as his partner or why she's his partner. Um, but sort of the thing like, I like simple. Uh, I, I feel that, uh, I feel that if he'd gone first in ranking people, he probably would have had a different answer for that. But I feel that this was just him, him uh, trying to stay with the boys. Uh <laughs> yeah, she was there. <laughs> Just letting y'all know y'all beautiful, okay? <laughs> we just, know. Okay. Just making sure. But I gotta be brutally honest somehow. As for number one, she would be that one person I would go to if I need any support, any love, and I like simplicity. You, you see that? That's, that's, I, like, I like that. That's nice. That's a lovely thing to say about your partner. Um, yeah. Number two. I love the fit. Number three, cool socks. <laughs> number four, she's pretty cool too. And number five, pretty cool also. 
You know, it's just not my type. No hard feelings though, y'all. <laughs> Four, this person's like athletic and motivated. And then five, no certain reason, just someone's gotta be last. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. Shall I actually let me let them speak before I, I give my two cents, okay? It is so interesting to see how differently men and women perceive attractiveness. I think this is one of our major divides as well, because it means that we're all aspiring toward different ideas of what the other sex finds attractive but we have absolutely no idea what that is because we're all you know on the battlefield of the culture and gender wars you know their anger at this ranking uh, especially the group of four because now as you can see jennifer is dividing the group she's defined she's dividing the girl squad and that will not do because they had this all worked out <laughs> you know they knew they knew they had it all worked out. And with them, it's as long as they are in the top four and none of them are five. That's, that was the goal, ultimately. She has split up the Spice Girls and boy, oh, it is not good. I'm gonna be honest with this because as, a, as, as a, an empowered black woman, okay, I know this all too well. <laughs> and you know, I'm not saying I don't, I don't believe that like dating preferences and all that is, is racist or anything. I think that this is, this has to do with like physical things. This has to do with very superficial things. I think as you can see with um, uh, Ajaya, I believe her name is, apologies, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but in terms of her boyfriend, I mean, she's dating a white guy. She's like happy. Um, our top girl, Sophia or Sophia, she's dating a black guy. I mean, I think all of this has to like once you get to know somebody it's a very different story like this happens to me all the time like on dating apps when i was on them uh or if it was like meeting for the first time nobody finds me at all physically attractive like it's crazy like it, it would blow my mind a lot of the time and it would get me so like insecure and upset i mean now it still does like obviously but i don't go into those spaces i don't go into dating dating apps or anything like that because there's just no point uh, i'm just destroying my will to live when I do that but it is just it's like once people get to know you then it suddenly changes you know once I start talking for like five minutes then suddenly like you know some guys are like oh okay like you know why not but when it's just me <laughs> it's like nobody will even look at me um you know not even when I'm looking like stereotypically feminine you know hot and everything like it's that feeling when like um a guy is is more interested in a in somebody just because she's white <laughs> and you know you know it's uncomfortable to talk about because on the one hand i'm like this is just this is just how it is like this is this is how the world is like in every society like this isn't even just a european thing like this is a thing everywhere in the world, in Asia, in Africa, everywhere. Um, and I think that it is, I wouldn't call it racial prejudice, Kiki. I'd call it racial preference, which I think can be undermined by those important things. Um, you know, your personality, um, getting to know somebody, um, the attractiveness building over time. Um, you know, with all of my exes, it's been attraction building over time, getting to know each other, working together, um, those sorts of things. It's never been like a sort of love at first sight, um, at least not toward me. Um, and I think, you know, it's, 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 it is difficult. Like, 
you know, it's it's difficult. I do find it far more difficult with like women than with men. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Um, whew. Oh, that's that's a difficult terrain to navigate. Uh, let's get back to our mean girls who've been divided. Uh... <laughs> Seems like a guy's choice. <laughs> I feel like I don't. I don't yeah, this is <laughs> last basically this last caught me off guard. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You can see how that affected them. Wow. Yeah. The girl group is broken up. The guys broke it up. Yeah. I don't think I should be here. Oh. <laughs> I forgot she said that. Gosh, that's indirect. I don't think I should be here. Oh, so you're saying that that's basically her way of saying I'm prettier than Jennifer. Girl, you know, okay, let's let's play devil's advocate. Let's let's say that this isn't about race. Uh, I'm like 90% sure that it is like obviously like the racial thing, um, that it is the racial thing. But let's play devil's advocate, okay? Um, what I've just seen online, sort of, um, at least insofar as what men say about things. A lot of things that women do, like in terms of their beauty regimen and routine guys don't seem to find as attractive as women themselves do um such as the fake eyelashes um the fake nails um tattoos for instance um these things in terms of like conventional like just your average joe guys these don't seem to be things that they find attractive though it's also interesting because you know men tend to say one thing but then they're all following like Instagram models with like their big BBLs. So it's a bit, you don't know what to believe um, exactly. Uh, very surprised. Mm, kind of, yeah. I'm not really sure what the guys factored in to get there, but I think. Oh, you know, Agen Agenia. I hope I pronounced that right. I'm so sorry. Yeah, you, you know. We, we know, we know, we know, we know. It's rough. That the girls have like a more open-heartedly perspective. Oh, that beautiful? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I was gonna say, we're all beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. This is our Sophia number five. Yeah. I don't think the ranking is based even on attractiveness. I think yeah. we just got put in our places. Um, I'm not Morgan, a mind coach that doesn't know. <laughs> no. Oh, that was so so mean but so good oh i i i i doff my hat to you <laughs> that was a good one <laughs>